Okay, so in this Baldur's Gate 3 video, we're going to be talking a bit about companions and romance. I know there's a lot of discussion about who's romanceable, who's not romanceable, uh, what companions you can take, what they can do, etc. So we're going to discuss some of this in this video, and I kind of want to start by going through the companions, what their abilities are, what their personalities are, and do a little bit of a recap before we get into some of the newer things and some things you might not know. So first of all, we have Astarian, right? He is the vampire noble character that is a half-elf. He is kind of an evil character in this game, so if you enjoy being kind of a dick to other players and characters, then you'll probably enjoy taking Astarian along with you. He's not always that way, but he does have a lot of quippy one-liners that are interesting. And fun fact about him, if you discuss him being a vampire with him or you let him bite you, he will gain the vampire bite ability, which will allow him to heal himself while dealing damage, and this does not break stealth. And if you were wondering if he was romanceable, if you somehow live under a rock and didn't see the panel from hell or anywhere on the internet talking about this, he is very, very romanceable. And we still don't know what all his flags are for romance in terms of like what, you know, will trigger romances with him, whether it matters what gender you are or not. Um, that remains to be seen, but we do know that he's romanceable. And in case I forgot to mention it, Asturian is also a rogue, so he's going to be thiefing around or, you know, using sneak attack on a lot of characters. Remember that we learned recently that characters or companions in Baldur's Gate 3 can be respect into any class. We don't know for sure if that's going to make it into the full release of the game, but it seems like it's pretty sure at this point from what I've seen. So you can change his class, but if you don't you decide to keep him as is, he's going to be playing as a rogue. And talking a little bit about romance too, before I get into the next character, talking with Crystal, one of the writers for the game, um, it became very clear that romance in Baldur's Gate 3 is not just do a quest and get laid. I don't know if that's exactly how she worded it, but it was close. It's not just do a quest for this character, their personal quest, and then they sex you. They have to agree with a lot of your ideology and a lot of the decisions that you make throughout the game. I imagine there are probably some flags that if you do incorrectly, you might not be able to romance them. I don't know for sure. But it's not just as simple as, you know, do the quest, then they'll have sex with you. So moving along to Shadowheart, she is also a high half-elf, just like Astarian. She is a trickster domain cleric, so she has a little bit of stealthy, sneaky stuff in her repertoire. She can also heal and attack from range uh, using spells. And we know that she is kind of not all that she seems to be, right? We don't have a ton of detail at this point on just exactly what's going on. But we do know that she has a fixation on the artifact that we see her have on the Nautiloid. And... She is constantly holding this thing, and we're trying to figure out, like, what it is. And Shadowheart is one of those characters that seems rough around the edges, but she seems like she's actually really like, a really good person struggling with some very dark things. So I think, generally speaking, if you're more of, like, a good-type character or one that kind of rides the middle but tends to lean a little more to the good side, Shadowheart would fit well into your, you know, your party. And also, she's romanceable from everything we know. We don't know, again, like, what her flags are terms of how you romance her and go about it but obviously doing things that are typically good get her approval and you know the, usually on the good side of things are or that contribute to you know completing your objectives she's usually on board with so next we have gale who is a human wizard and you can recruit him pretty early on in the game gale is obviously in this weird boat right because he's struggling with something that is going to cause disaster unless you keep feeding him magic items which is obviously the unique thing about his character. But he's also a very good character. He's like the classic type good character besides Will. He's probably one of the best good characters that you'll play. So if you generally like playing a good character, then you will obviously be choosing him as one of your companions. Uh, just like Shadowheart and Astarian, he's also romanceable, but we don't have a lot of details at this point on how that all unfolds. That takes us to Lizelle, who is like my favorite companion probably, or second favorite companion now, we'll see. Uh, she is a Gith Yankee fighter, and you can get her very early on in the game. And she's probably, I think, what people would consider like a lawful evil character. There is an alignment in Baldur's Gate 3, but that's kind of the way she is. She follows a very strict code, and if you violate that code, she doesn't like it at all. And, you know, most of her decisions tend to be very self-centered, and, you know, they typically focus on survival at all costs. So if you're a player who doesn't mind getting your hands a little bit dirty in order to you know, achieve your objectives, then Lizelle is a good character for you. She's also very feisty and fiery. A lot of people like that in their romantic partner. So that's kind of what you're looking for. You'll see now when she's walking around the camp, she kind of has this like leathery outfit on that's, well, you might be into that or you might be not. But, you know, she's kind of spicy to say. 
And some interesting things about her, too, is like she has a, some particularly interesting interactions with the Githyanki you meet her along the road near the beginning of the game. And also, once you get to the Githyanki crash, obviously, you're going to have some unique dialogues with her there. So there's some places very early on in the game where this character gets really involved with the dialogue. And this takes us to Will, who is a human warlock character with the subclass of the Fiend. Very charismatic character. Will is one of the, you know, true good characters in this game. So, and he's got kind of a bad situation going on. He's made a pact with a demon. And now he's kind of bound to do the things this demon wants him to do. And you can either, you know, help him do those things or try and talk him out of them. And there are ramifications either way, depending on how that goes. That's kind of his internal struggle, if you will. But he's a very good character. So if you like playing a good playthrough, which I know a lot of people like doing on their first playthrough, Will is not a bad one to take along. And something interesting about Will as well is this character has been significantly rewritten, particularly from Act 2 onwards, so not a lot we would see there, but some of Act 1 as well. His voice lines have all been re-recorded by a new voice actor, so if you're wondering why Will sounds different, it's because he has a new voice actor as well. I wasn't able to get an exact answer about why there's a new voice actor and why it was rewritten, but it's possible it's because they, you know, with the changing to companions, being able to respect them, maybe it's possible they had to rewrite the companion in a way that allows for that. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. but Or maybe they just de deemed that, you know, the way his storyline went, it didn't fit the story completely. I'm not 100% sure, but I didn't get, like, an exact straight answer or anything like that. And Will is also romanceable for those who want to romance a good person. So then we have Karlak, who is a Asmodeus Tiefling Barbarian, and she's a female, and we saw her in Early Access. You could help her or not help her, but you couldn't recruit her. In the full version of the game, you'll be able to recruit her at that point. And you can take on the paladins there with her or not. And she's another character that's really, really feisty, but she's really pure of heart. So if you're trying to make like a party of like all good characters, you'd probably take Karlak, Gale, and Will, something like that. Um, keep in mind that you can change their classes to fit around what you want to do again. But she's a very, very good character. She has an infernal heart. And a lot of people are speculating about whether the soul coins that you can get can power her up or not. And while I'm not 100% sure that's what they're for, I'm like 90% sure, just based on a conversation I had with one of the developers when I was playing co-op with them, they were piloting their own unique character and Karlak, and I was piloting the Dark Urge and Lysel. And he was like, oh, we should stop over there to get a soul coin. And I d he didn't say for Karlak, but I was assuming it was for Karlak. I mean, I don't know who else it would have been for because he had a custom character. So, and he didn't elaborate on like... You know, if we use the soul kind on Karlak, what it would do, it just sounded like it would power her up, but I don't know in what way. But I'm pretty convinced that the soul coins are for her. So if you've been wondering about that, you can put a little bit of those, you know, questions to rest. I wouldn't say it's 100% the case, but I'm like 90% sure. And obviously, if you saw the panel from hell, you know that you can romance her. And apparently there's like a whole romance scene after that little dinner scene that you had in the presentation they had from the panel from hell. Um, during our presentation, we got to see a very similar scene with her, and they like cut it off as it was like fading into what seemed to be a sex scene. I don't know for sure if that's what it was, but obviously she's very, very romanceable as well. So this brings us to the companions that are not playable as origins, right? Like all the previous characters you could play as as your character, your main avatar if you want, but these ones you can recruit, but they are not playable as your main avatar. So Halson is the first one. He's a wood elf druid. And you can recruit him, you know, I believe at the end of Act 1, if I'm not mistaken. And he can be romanced, as we saw in the Astarian scene, so we know that. I don't know exactly, you know, if what sort of flags he has for his romance, whether he'll romance anyone, or if it has to be specific characters. Don't have a lot of data on that. We do know he'll romance Astarian, that's about all we know. But he is a very good character if you need a druid in your class. He's also a very good character. So if you're looking for another good character in your party, then Halson is not a bad one to take. And then we come to Minthara, who is the only character in Early Access that you can currently have sexual relations with, although we do know you can with the other characters in the full version of the game that I've mentioned. She is a drow paladin, and she is kind of an evil character, right? So if you are going to be doing an evil playthrough, then you would probably want Minthara. And um, she can be your romantic partner, and you can recruit her in Act 2. I don't know exactly how you recruit her, but you have to help her in Act 1 in order to recruit her, that was made clear. So if you don't help her in Act 1, you're probably not going to be able to recruit her in Act 2. So if you want her in your party, make sure you help her in Act 1 and do the horrible things to the Grove that are necessary in order to get her. And that takes us to Minsk, who is a human ranger male, and he's probably not recruitable until Act 2 from everything I know so far, particularly because we haven't seen him in Act 1. 
Uh, but we do know that you do run into him in Baldur's Gate in the city there doing a quest. And we don't really know what happens after that, right? Like, I assume the actions that you take with him will determine whether you recruit him or whether maybe make an enemy out of him. Because there are a lot of mysteries surrounding why he's helping, you know, the Absolute. It doesn't seem to make sense. And that's something we need to get to the bottom to. So not a lot is known with him so far, um, other than you can recruit him in Act 2. A lot of people are wondering if you'll be able to romance him or not, but just based on the fact that I'm like 99% sure that you can't romance Jahira, I don't think you'll be able to romance Minsk either, but we'll have to see. And that takes us to Jahira, who is a half-elf female druid. I don't know if she's multi-classed as a fighter or not. I did see her use a druid spell, so I do know she's at least a druid. And you find her in Act 2 and you can recruit her. As far as I know, she's not romanceable. I think Sven said that she wasn't romanceable. I can like vaguely remember him saying that in my head. She's like really old at this point. I think it's the same logic for Minsk. So I think if you apply the logic to Jahira to Minsk, I think it's likely that those two characters are not romanceable. Again, we'll find that out soon. And Jahira is kind of like a neutral good character in this game, right? Like she's trying to do the right thing, but she also doesn't mind getting her hands dirty a bit either. Maybe a chaotic good or something like that. She's kind of the middle of the road. She's a badass and she does not get pushed around easily by good or bad people. So that's all the companions we know so far, whether they're romanceable or not. I am relatively certain there's at least one or two more companions in the full version of the game. I vaguely recall them saying these weren't all the companions, but I don't think there's like a ton more if there are. It's either like there's like one or two more or that's pretty much it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I could have sworn I heard them say that there was at least more one or two more companions in the game. And something I didn't talk a little bit about earlier is the dynamic between companions themselves. They have their own dynamics. For instance, Lysel and Shadowheart hate each other. If you played Early Access, you know this already. They do not get along. And maybe you like both of those characters and you want them both in your party. It's hard to keep them both happy. And you might run into problems doing that. Or maybe they'll become friends if you keep them together long enough. You don't know. And one other thing I want to mention about companions in this game is that there's not only the romance side, but they can also leave your party if they're not happy with you. They don't like the decisions that you've made, they can leave, or they can betray you, or they can try and kill you. So I think people are kind of aware of that aspect from like Lizelle, you know, at the beginning she's very clear that she'll end you if you start changing into a mind flayer, but I think it'd be a far more interesting if all of a sudden Gale decided to blow your head off with a fireball because of something you did. These sort of things, you know, are the things that get my mind turning, right? Not the obvious betrayals or attempts on you, but the things that you might have to push some of these good characters to do in order to do these things. So this obviously means that you need to be a bit careful about the things that you do and the decisions that you make and the company that you keep because it's not only about, oh, whether they love me or not, it's uh, about maybe they'll hate you and try and kill you and spill your guts all over the floor. Uh, another one, spoiler, so turn your ears away if you don't want a spoiler on this one, is that Will's demon, or, you know, fiend, whatever, that he's got a pact with, wants him to kill Karlak. And he doesn't want to kill Karlak. And you have to decide whether you're going to let him do that, which he can, or to not do that. And there are ramifications if he doesn't, because he would be basically going against his pact. So, you know, it's like, which, which are you going to pick? There are a lot of hard decisions in this game, and some of them come from the companions that you choose to bring along with you and their dynamics together. And one last piece of information that I want to leave you with that I don't know if anyone else has mentioned anywhere else when it comes to the romance front, and I know you guys will find this juicy, but it is possible to romance multiple characters at the same time. Now, it depends on the characters that you're romancing because not all characters are into that, obviously. They will not have any of that. But some characters don't care. So you might be able to have multiple relationships in this game depending on which characters they are, and you might have some interesting scenes uh, because of that in some cases. So keep that in mind as well. So that wraps up our video on companions and romance in this game. Um, I, I think there's some things in there people probably didn't know. I know a lot of this was probably known, but for people who haven't been keeping up with Baldur's Gate 3, some of this is probably very new to them. Uh, we'll obviously have specific companion guides uh, when we get you know closer to launch. We did ones for early access. We'll have more thorough ones after launch when we know specifically how you can romance these characters and what you need to do and what you need to avoid, etc.